Welcome back to another CIS podcast, which is sponsored by Ewing Farms, Michaela's farm. Yes. Um, I'm your host, Sydney Hintermeister. I'm also on the business team. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Michaela Ewing. I'm marketing lead, and I've been on the team for two years. My name is Hegan Murphy. I am the electrical lead. I'm part of Chairman's. I've been on the team for four years. Nice. So with all the years we have combined, what are some skills that you've learned over you want, the years? You want to go first? Sure. So with electrical, I mean, in the last four years, you've learned a lot in that department. Um, I have learned just basically wiring the robot. I've learned how to manage issues with that come with electricity because it can be a hazard. I have learned how to manage the batteries because the batteries are a big part of robotics and ensuring that your robot can compete. And from chairmans, I've learned how to, you know, present something, how to uh, write in a professional way, and how to speak in a professional way. I think that's a big one, speaking professionally. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people on the team have, like, picked up, like, speaking in front of people, especially the leads, mm -hmm. throughout their time presenting on LGMs. Um, some of the skills I've learned from robotics, uh, a lot of marketing and business. Um, with business, I've been helping Sydney with the business lead um, on just like helping get sponsors, obtaining sponsors, um, helping mentor other teams on how we fundraise and how like our uh, fiscal plan works. Uh, for marketing, I've worked with promo items, t-shirts, badges, our logos, and branding standards. Yeah, and I can add um, with the business side a lot with budgeting and finance that I had no idea how to do before this so yeah I know some of that stuff like I had no idea like what it was and like now like being a high schooler knowing a bunch of that stuff it's like right. really helpful yeah and stuff I never thought I would have learned so what are some of the challenges that you've had with your department or the hardest part for marketing the hardest part I think we faced this year is it was hard to get like new members and younger members on the team this year so we don't have like as many people in our departments um, ready to pass the torch over yet a lot of them are new um haven't been on the team don't have, don't have as much experience but we're working with it and we're training a lot of people in yeah so actually i'm facing a lot of the same issues with electrical there's a couple of members floating around but there's not a lot of members that are really a uh, part of electrical which has always been an issue but now since COVID, it's been even more of an issue and uh yeah with chairmen and stuff like that there's really just not a lot of people to pass the torch down to so that's where we see a lot of our documenting coming in this year starting to leave a lot of uh Instead of just oral knowledge, we're leaving back written knowledge for the younger students to uh, refer back to. Has that made it hard for like electrical, like not having things like written down in the past years? Yeah, it has because I've had to redo a lot of things year to year to year because we don't write down our failures or successes. So this year I finally started documenting everything like that so uh, we can keep track of that for the next years. People don't make the same mistakes that we've already made over again. Yeah. The risk analysis part of that. Yeah, and a lot of our departments have been working, mm -hmm. planning stuff out, like what of our, like we've done a lot of SWOT analysis, I know for business and marketing, working on really like optimizing our strengths and stuff and using those to help us keep moving forward. Yeah. And I've found a lot of the same challenges with business, the people, getting more people involved. What are some of the achievements that we've made as a team so far this year? For marketing, um, biggest achievements this year and mostly was like done last year for marketing was creating our branding standards for our team. Um, it's helped us create a lot of our documentation the same. So if you're looking, if it's electrical or business, it looks the same, it's just different material. Um, our logo, how our logo is presented on social media, it's always the same. That's really helped us create a unified look for our team. That was a really good addition that happened. Started happening last year and is yeah, strengthening this year. It's helped a lot, especially like our presentations, they all look the same and stuff. And I think it's made it easier to look and recognize our team. Absolutely. Keegan, some of your greatest accomplishments? So in electrical this year, we've been able to professionalize a lot of things and uh, we've been able to clean things up in the back room, which have been a mess for the last couple of years. And then we've really kept things to a standard now, just like marketing has. So from year to year, we can keep things uniform with electrical and what steps we go through in the year because electrical before has kind of been disorganized with uh, when we do what at what point in the season. This year, I've been able to kind of uh, almost create just an electrical 101 guide where you just uh, have certain uh, milestones to meet along the season and uh, keep meeting those goals along the season so we can keep on track. Do you wish you would have had some sort of definitive documentation before joining the team? Absolutely. It would have helped a lot. Even when you first get into things, um, you really have to go to a lead and start picking up knowledge from mm -hmm. them. You have to watch them do things, shadow, and it's very likely that in future years, instead of uh, just simply 
learning from the lead. Now kids that are entering the team can just read some documentation and hop right into things. Yeah. And I know with branding standards, there was really nothing. Yeah, there was a one-page document that had everything, and now it's like a 40 to 50-page binder full of stuff. But I think, like, the hardest part with us, like, for us seniors, like, with documentation was the way last year ended so, like, abruptly. Like, they yeah. couldn't finish documentation, or, like, we couldn't have picked up everything, like, that we would have if we would have had the full season. So, mm -hmm. like, documentation not knowing, oh, what do you do with this, what do you do with that. I know like we have really good connections with the people that graduated last year so I know they're always willing to help us and and people who graduated years past yeah have definitely been helpful that has been really interesting so also going before robotics um what is your earliest memory on the team or coming into the team I don't remember a lot from my freshman <laughs> year I do remember worlds worlds was really fun it was a great experience um I believe Eric Brandt was also on the team mm -hmm. at the time so yeah, Worlds was a really fun trip. That's probably one of my earliest memories and what got me into the team. I just remember thinking it was like this kind of nerd group. <laughs> I was like, why would I want to join robotics? Yeah. That was the last thing. And then some friends convinced me to join, and um, I realized it's much more than <laughs> what I thought it was. Yeah, I would say mine is really similar to Sydney's. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, robotics, like, I don't know if I'm going to join. Like, I'm not hands-on, mechanically mm -hmm. inclined to build a robot, but... I was talked into joining marketing and business, and I just remember being at the first LGM right before kickoff, and just, like, it was my first time, like, experiencing robotics, and the way, like, Yurik presented, and, like, his energy that day, mm -hmm. like, I've never seen that man so excited for kickoff. <laughs> it was one of just, it was just a great time, and, like, that was my first day, and, like, that's what I remember now, mm -hmm. like, with robotics, like, just that excitement building off for kickoff. Yeah, that was so cool. And how that excitement continues after we've accomplished so many things and continued on. Yeah, I even feel like this year, like we don't have like we don't have any events like right now to look forward mm -hmm. to that are planned, but just like knowing like the potential we have this year, um, it's just exciting. And seeing all like the new people come in and like they haven't experienced the regionals like last year, like we have, and just the fun we had at Grand Forks. Um, and I think our team really came together at that regional. Like it was a rough patch but it was still like I think a fun event for our team absolutely I just think there was so much excitement there that and a lot of great memories taken away from yeah that. definitely all right so jumping away from robotics a little bit after we graduate and we're out of here what would be your dream job to go into well I mean I want to work for Google it's a stretch but I think it'd be cool or like just another top tech firm like Microsoft anything like that that would be really fun I feel like robotics could set up some connections for that, so that's that's the plan. That's really awesome. Redesign a new Google page, <laughs> <laughs> new website. New website. Is there any yeah. like ties to Google specifically? Like you really want to go there for a certain reason? Um, I want to work on kind of like their stuff in the like their server code and stuff like that. So instead of working on their web page directly, I could work on some stuff that happens behind the scenes. So like even like when you log into a Google Meet, all the stuff behind the scenes that happens with your Google Meet or like Google Classroom, I could be working on that and designing some of that, so. That's really cool. Uh, my dream job would be to go into an agricultural business job, um, doing some like, you said like behind the scenes stuff people don't see, um, working like transportation economics within the agricultural society would be my dream job. And the tie to the farm definitely helps yeah. with that. Growing up on a farm, that definitely helps. And I already have, like, a little bit of experience, but I know I still have so much to learn, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. My dream job would definitely be traveling the world. I'm going to minor in Spanish and do psych psychology. That's awesome. Around, whatever that may mean. Do you have any, like, certain, like, destination you really want to visit? Like, on the mm. bucket list? On the bucket list. Argentina would be fun. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to go to Denmark and Finland. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any places that you're dying to go? Um, I kind of want to go to Germany. That's where a lot of my ancestry is from. And maybe Ireland. That's a lot of where my ancestry is from. So I think that'd be cool. Nice history lesson. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For me, I have no idea i really want to go to fiji or like the maldives like i heard that's like gorgeous there like thailand Ooh, yeah so we'll see maybe someday maybe someday start a farm over in thailand there you go i don't know take your major and <laughs> run with this <laughs> yeah <laughs>
Thanks again for listening to CIS Podcast. I'm your host, Sydney, here with Michaela and Keegan. And thanks again to Ewing Farms for sponsoring this video.